Hey everybody, this is David Warner with another M365 video SharePoint short. Today we're going to continue in the video series list formatting, automated development deployment, and cover part two configuring VS Code. We're going to build upon the file and folder structure that we saw in part one. If you haven't watched that, I highly recommend it. Uh, this second part definitely builds upon what we learned there. We're going to review and refresh ourselves on the deployment process. We're going to create some VS Code custom tasks that will allow us to actually have our definitions deployed out to SharePoint, whether it be a, a list column, a site column, or a view. And then we're going to execute those custom tasks so that they will be sent out for us automatically. Let's take a look. As a reminder from our last part one video, we want to review the automated development deployment process again. We've already seen in part one how we can set up our files and folder structure that'll provide the best organization for automating that deployment of the definition files. We've taken a look at the PowerShell templates uh, with the correct list, column, and view names scoped within them so that we can deploy them to the right places in SharePoint. Now we're gonna look at see how we can create Visual Studio Code custom tasks to support the deployment of those definitions. Let's begin by refreshing ourselves with the list that we're going to apply our list formatting enhancements to. We see this is a simple task list. Uh, for our column formatting enhancements, we're going to apply them to the task status. So we're going to see the color background and the icon change. And then for our view formatting enhancement, we're going to go ahead and apply it to our task view view here. We jump back into Visual Studio Code where we pre-opened our templated files that include our JSON definitions and our PowerShell files. Now this is where we're going to set up Visual Studio Code to perform our automated deployment. We're going to create custom tasks. When we create custom tasks in VS Code, it's going to add to our solution files over here. It's going to create a dot at VS Code folder, which is going to then include a JSON file that defines how our custom tasks work, what they're called, and how they will be executed. Now the cool thing about Visual Studio creating the task definition files here as part of our solution is next time we come in and need to edit our uh, list formatting definitions, those tasks will already exist. They'll already be wired up to our PowerShell and be ready for us to go ahead and deploy those changes automatically. To create custom tasks within VS Code, you wanna execute a command called configure tasks. To do that, you can get to the command palette you can get there by selecting view, command palette, there are shortcut keyboards depending on the operating system you're using. You can also select F1. We'll just execute it here from the view command. And you can see it brings up options. So we're going to type tasks. And you see one of the options is configure task. So we'll go ahead and select that. It gives us an option to create tasks.json file from template. Now, what this means is this is just the definition file for what our custom tasks will be. We'll go ahead and select that. It gives us a couple template options. We'll just go ahead and use the default MS build. Now, once we identified that we're just going to use the MS build template, it created this tasks.json file for us. And you'll notice over here, it also created the .vs code along with placing the tasks.json file there. Now we're not actually going to use this template, we're going to replace it with one that I've pre-created for the purposes of this demo. But it's important to note that the purpose of this is that when we go to actually execute a task, Visual Studio Code knows to go look into the VS Code tasks.json file to find the available tasks that we have created. And it is preserved, so the next time we open the solution folder to edit our column formatting or view formatting, it will include those tasks so we can use them moving forward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all on the default uh, template that was created here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste, and I'm gonna save. Now let's take a quick look at the makeup of this tasks.json file code that I pasted in. What I've created here is three different tasks, one for each type of list formatting function that I may wanna deploy. I've got one for site columns, I have one for list columns, and I have one for list view formatting. And you notice they're all identical with the exception of the label name being separate. They both use, or they all use shell. It's the type of command that it is, or the type of task that it is. And then there's the actual command that's being run or executed. Each of them connect to the individual PowerShell files for the contextual purpose. So list formatting on a site column is going to utilize the PowerShell file for site columns list column for list column, and list view for list view. This allows us to ensure that when I execute, for example, a site column formatting JSON definition deployment task, it ensures that it's connecting to the actual site column PowerShell script and executing the code that is appropriate for updating the site column that's defined within the PowerShell. 
Essentially in its simplest form, we're simply just saying, here's a name for my task and here's what you need to go do. So if I were to run a task and choose this task to be ran, it's going to go execute the PowerShell script that's been associated to it. Okay, now that we've configured our task by creating the tasks.json file, and we've included all of the code needed to define what our tasks will do, let's go ahead and see how we can actually execute and run a task for one of our definition files. We're gonna start by deploying a column formatting enhancement to the list column that was created directly within the list. That's the task status column that we saw earlier. So let's go ahead and close our tasks.json file. And we'll go ahead and close the VS Code folder. We'll open the JSON definitions and we'll go ahead and click on the list formatting.column definition.taskstatus.json. Now this column formatting definition is very simple. It's taken directly from the GitHub repository for samples. It simply just applies a background color and an icon to the task status column, depending on what values are in it. We see that a custom class is associated as well as an icon name. Now typically the way you would deploy this column formatting enhancement is you'd come into Visual Studio Code, you'd create it or you'd edit an existing one. When you're ready to deploy it, you'd select all, you'd copy it, you'd alt tab over into your browser, you'd edit the column formatting, you'd paste it, you'd hit preview or save, it looks good, you can keep making changes if you need to, and then you just continue to do that cycle. Come back in, change, alt tab, edit, save, and it's kind of cumbersome, but now we don't have to do that anymore. We can use our custom tasks. To run one of our custom tasks, we're gonna go ahead and re-engage with the command palette. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and select F1 to execute. Now we're gonna type tasks again, and we're gonna see we're given a collection of commands associated to running tasks. So we'll go ahead and move down to run task. We're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and now we see it's giving us a list of our custom tasks. How cool is that? We know that we're gonna update the column formatting for the list column that lives directly within the list, so we'll go ahead and just select that. And we see it gives us some options on uh, scanning for errors, not really applicable in this case, so we'll just go ahead and select continue without scanning the task output. Now what's happening is it's just connecting to our PowerShell script and executing that PowerShell script. We see down here at the bottom, it's now told us that the list column formatting definition has been updated. So we can actually move over to our browser and confirm that. Now we switched over to our browser and we see the list is still in the same state it was that we originally looked at. There's nothing happening here yet to the task status. And that's simply because we just haven't refreshed yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Control F5, I'm gonna refresh. And now what we're gonna see is that column formatting has already been associated to the task status. If I go ahead and select the header and go to column settings and format this column, we see it's been automatically deployed here for us into the column format or the format column settings. Now one could certainly make the argument that, hey, you still had to alt tab, you still had to refresh the page to see your updates. You're right. That's just because the demo is very simplistic. Our PowerShell script is doing nothing more than deploying out our updates as we make them and execute on our tasks. But it could be more robust. We could update our PowerShell script to actually open up a connection to the browser, refresh the page for us, and make it the active window. Now let's see how we can execute the site column task to go change and apply our column formatting to a site column. I've got a column already created here in this other tab that I've opened. We see it's called column formatting field 01. And if I scroll down, you can see that it's column formatting value is empty. There's nothing there. So let's switch over to VS Code and let's execute on the same column formatting definition that we had for the list column. We're just going to execute the task now that deploys it out to this site column. Now we're back in VS Code. We're gonna go ahead and execute one of our custom tasks, just like we did for the list column definition, uh, but this time we're gonna select site column. So we'll go ahead and select F1 to engage the command palette. We see that run task is showing up first as a recently used, great. So we'll go ahead and select enter. And in this time, instead, we're gonna go ahead and select site column formatting definition deployment. So we'll hit enter. We'll say continue scanning the task without scanning. We'll hit enter, we see the site column uh, PowerShell script is now being executed down here at the bottom. Site column formatting definition has been updated. So let's jump back to the browser and see if that is true. Now we're back in the browser, still on the site column field. We see that it's blank. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh, hit F5. And now we'll go ahead and scroll down and we see that our definition has been deployed to the site column. Pretty cool. Now let's take a look at our final custom action, our view formatting. So to do that, we'll go ahead and jump back into our list. We'll go ahead and save on our column formatting that was set earlier. We'll close that. And we'll go ahead and select the view that we want to apply it to. 
task view. We're back in Visual Studio Code. I've gone ahead and pre-opened the task view JSON definition file. It's a very simple view formatting definition. It just simply creates uh, two divs stacked on top of one another for our title and our task status. To auto-deploy our view formatting definition, we'll do it just like the previous two examples. We'll go ahead and select F1 to engage the command palette. We'll select Run Task. We'll go ahead and select List View Formatting JSON Definition Deployment. We'll select Continue without scanning the task output. And we see, again, it's executing our PowerShell script down here at the bottom. We got the green, green light. List View Formatting Definition has been updated. So let's jump back over to our browser. We see our list is in the exact same state we left it when we updated uh, it last time. So we'll go ahead and select refresh because we're already on the task view view. So we simply just need to select refresh. And once it refreshes, we see that we now have our task status. Now you can see that we've created the title task one, task two, task three to be purple. Let's go ahead and change that over to orange though and see how, again, we can utilize this uh, automated task deployment process for updates. So we're back in Visual Studio Code. We know that we want to change the color of our title. Uh, that's located right here. And so we're just going to go ahead and paste in a new hex value. Go ahead and paste that there. We'll go ahead and save. And then we just re-engage the task. We hit F1. We hit Run Task. List view was uh, recently selected, so it's right at the top for us. We'll hit OK. OK. We see it's executing our PowerShell. And as soon as that's done and we get the green light, which we just did, we can jump back into the browser. We're back in the browser. We see it's the exact same state we left it. We'll go ahead and refresh. And now we see that our title names have been changed from purple to orange. Thanks for watching the video today. Here's some useful links around list formatting. See you next time.